Hi, um, everyone, and uh, Rabbi Zukir, uh, thank you for bearing with us. Um, just a little, uh, yeah, a bit of a mishap, but um, uh, I think, uh, yeah, um, we should, I guess, uh, uh, not uh, lose any more time. And, you know, as per usual, we'll probably be taking, you know, momentary breaks and uh, for questions and anything that was, you know, put into the chat earlier. So, um, okay. All right. Um, so last, last time we started our series on the scope of Torah by discussing the different reasons why it might be important to study Torah, whether, you know, the, whether that's the commandment to study Torah, uh, which applies at least to adult Jewish men, um, whether it's the idea of the practicality of uh, knowing how to, how to keep halacha, whether it's different ideas of relating to God, loving God, or serving God uh, through Torah study, um, or just more generally uh, a way of staying, uh, staying religious, staying Jewishly connected through Torah study. We went through a bunch of sources on that count, including uh, about a half a parak in the Rambam, Hilchos Tamil Torah Parak Hey, where he gets into a lot of those details. Um, so that was sort of stage one, big picture, you know, why study Torah at all and, and uh, different reasons for studying Torah. This week, we're going to focus on a particular Gemara uh, that talks about different areas of Torah and what might or might not qualify for the purposes of Birchasa Torah, the commandment, uh, not the commandment, the, the bracha, the blessing that's said on that's said on Torah. Um, and we'll see that may speak to some of the deeper questions of what qualifies as Torah uh, proper, as Torah in the, in, the, uh, you know, in the objective full sense of the term. Uh, so that's our plan for today. And that will take us, we'll primarily work through a sugya of Gemara and it will get into, uh, get into the Shulchan Arach and, and uh, certain other halachic texts and their discussion as well. So that's the plan. Um, and I think this is pretty separable um, uh, separable conceptually from, from last week. So if you missed that, not to worry, but they are, of course, the series does build on, on uh, one another, the different parts of the series. So it, it works well either way. And uh, with no further ado, I'm gonna share the screen um, with, the, you know, stick our hand out, uh, stick our hand out uh, here in front of all of us. And uh, let's work through, let's work through this Gemara. So uh, this is Brachos Dav Yud Aleph about 10 pages into, 10 dop him into the beginning of the Gemara, and we get some practical, some practical stuff about what one does in the morning. So Amar of Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, and this is somewhat in the middle, but this is a reasonable place to start. Rav Yehuda says, Shmuel says, Hishkim Lishanos, you get up to study, right? What else does one do in the morning other than study Torah? So you get up and you want to study Torah. Kara Kriyashma Tzarek Levari, right? If you're before the point where you've read Kriyashma yet, you need to say a bracha, the, Torah, the blessing before Torah. But Misha Kara Kriyashma Enutzarach Levarich. If you know by the time you're asking this question, you already said the Shema, um, then you don't need to make a bracha anymore. Why? Shekfar Niftar Ba'ava Rabba. The one of the brachos, one of the blessings before Shema, Ava Rabba, right? A great love. We have loved you, etc. Talking about about uh, love for God, love for God's Torah. If you said that, and if you said Shema, you should have said the bracha prior to Shema. Um, that sort of counts as Birchas Torah. We're not going to go through a textual analysis and show how the themes overlap, um, but take that for granted. But that's uh, fine. That's the context here. We're talking about saying Birchas Torah in what cases one should say it and what cases not. And now we're going to ask a, a different question relating to that, which is what types of Torah study necessitate Birchas HaTorah in the first place? So we are going to have several different views here. Amar Rav Huna. Rav Huna says, Lemikra Tzarek Levarich. Right? For Mikra, for Tanakh, for biblical study, one needs to say a bracha. But Ula Medrish, right? for Midrash, for uh, let's say, and let's assume here we're talking about classical Midrash, Tanaitic Midrash, Midrashim that were compiled uh, by the third century CE. So, uh, you know, Michilta, Sifra, Sifrei, those early Midrashim, you don't need to say a bracha for that, says Rav Huna. Um, and we're going to get into some of the reasons why, but presumably it's not on the same level as Torah. Torah is, you know, Tanakh is sort of Torah proper, that needs a bracha. Medrash is a commentary, you know, a midrashic exposition uh, and analysis of that. It's a step removed. 
You don't need a bracha for that. That's Rav Huna's view. Next, we have Rav Lazar's view. Rav Lazar Omer, uh, Amar, Lemikra Ule Midrash. No, you do need to say a bracha on Medrash, just as on Tanakh, but Lemishnah, Enot Tzarech Levarach. But you don't need to say a bracha on Mishnah. So that's interesting. And, you know, what's the difference between Medrash and Mishnah? Presumably, again, we'll get into more detail on this in a bit, but presumably, um, Medrash comments directly on Torah, right? It's a direct commentary on, 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 on that, on, uh, on, you know, Torah Shabbat Shabbat Sab, the written Torah. And that's close enough. That's enough to qualify uh, for the requirement of Birchaz Torah, whereas Mishnah is sort of a standalone compilation, right? Mishnah is organized conceptually based on different areas that it applies to, um, right? Agricultural law and Finance, economic law, and sacrificial law, etc. It's not organized based on the psukim. Of course, the ideas come from there, but it's not organized based on that. It's a standalone composition. That's far enough removed. You don't say a berachas Torah on that. That's Rabbi Lazar's view. Now, a third view, Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Afla Mishnah Nami Tzarech Lavarich. You also need to say a bracha on Mishnah. You know what? Mishnah counts too. Why does Mishnah count? Well, presumably, he would say that uh, you know you don't need to be either Tanakh or a commentary on. Torah to qualify as sort of part, part of the core, part of the canon of Judaism, even if you're Mishnah, even if it's a standalone composition, Mishnah is a core part of Torah as well. It's, it's, uh, it's part, you know, uh, it, it determines the way we practice. It, it's central to all, all aspects of Judaism, really. And there's a whole, uh, people like to talk about this. Uh, when uh, Judaism is called the people of the book, right? Jews are called the people of the book. Actually, originally that appears in the Quran, but I think we've uh, we've happily taken that on and said you know that sounds about right. Um, but uh, which book are we talking about? So I think in the, in the Quran they meant the Tanakh, right? The the book book of the Bible. But actually, if you want to know, if you, if you said you can have one one canon, either Tanakh or Talmud, which one will be a closer approximation? You know, you sort of read this text, you see what people are doing. What what you know what gives you a better sense of what Jews are doing today? There's a good chance that uh, you get you get there more easily from Talmud. But anyways, putting that aside, so that, that's this view. Mishnah also qualifies. Mishnah also, uh, because it's so central, it's so definitional to what Judaism is, studying Mishnah also qualifies as Talmud Torah and also needs a bracha, a birchaz Torah beforehand. Avala Talmud, ain't no tzarek levarich, but you know what? Talmud, you don't need to. Why not Talmud? Well, what's Talmud? Talmud is a commentary on the Mishnah. So you might say, the, and, and you might say the Mishnah is the core laws, right? It's very practical Mishnah. Most of the time, the Mishnah is saying specifically what to do. Whereas Gemara gets caught up in these long, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, excursies and discourses and discussions, and sometimes it's not really tied to practice. It's a lot more theoretical. It's trying to explain things in theory. Maybe that's not. Maybe that doesn't count for the purposes of what needs Birchas Torah. It doesn't count as Torah in that way. Uh, so that's Rabbi Yochanan's view. The Rav Amar Afla Talmud Tzarich Levarich. Rav says, No, I disagree. Uh, Gemara as well, Talmud as well, you need to say a bracha. So these are the four views, right? Uh, again, assuming everyone, you know, only says what they say and nothing else, and, you know, they, dec- they would deny the things they don't mention. So the four views are only Tanakh, Tanakh and Medrash, Tanakh, Medrash, and Mishnah, Tanakh, Medrash, Mishnah, and Talmud, right? Those seem to be the four positions, each one building on the last. Um, and uh, Rava, you know, very often Rava gets his way. Rava is a very important Amora and Rava comes last here and says, Talmud 2, all four of them are in. Now, what's his proof? The Amr of Chia bar Ashi, Chia bar Ashi said, Zimnin Sagin have a kim the Kameh de Rav. Many times I would, I would uh, stand in front of Rav, Litanuye Pirkin, to study chapters, Bisifra de Bey Rav, in the book of the House of Rav. This is what's more commonly known as either Sifra, just the word Sifra, which means book, but it's a text, or, or a Torah Konim, Torah's Konim which is the, the uh, Tanaitic Midrash on Vayikra, right? It gets into all the details of sacrifice and what applies and what doesn't. This is called Sifra de Beirav. It may be called Sifra de Beirav because uh, it was composed by Rav, and that's why it's Sifra de Beirav, he put it together. Um, or it's just called Sifra de Beirav because, you know, the Sifra of the house of the rabbi, the rabbis, the rabbinic house, uh, the, uh, the base Midrash, they're the ones who put it together. Wh- whatever exactly the etymology is, um, but I was learning in front of Rav, says, says Rav Kibar Ashi. We were learning Sifra. And what did he do? Before we learned, he, uh, he washed his hands and he said a bracha. And then we learned the parak. So if Rav said before studying Sifra, 
Presumably, you should say a Birchat Torah before studying Sifra. Now, what is Rabbi Yochanan using this to prove? Oh, sorry, what is Rava? My, my bad. What is Rava using this to prove? Afla Talmud Tzarech. You need to say Birchat Torah on Talmud, which doesn't really fit because this is not Talmud. This is Midrash. This is one of the Tanitic Midrashim, Sifra. It's one of the classic, classical uh, early Midrashim. So what are you talking about? So we'll get to that. Some people ask that question. Let's assume for our purposes, the assumption is, yeah, okay, you know, uh, Talmud and Medrash are more or less the same. So if you're going to say a Berkhaz Torah on Talmud, then you would do it on Medrash too. That seems to go against what's earlier in the Gemara. So it's a little problematic. We'll see there's a couple ways of dealing with this uh, as we go forward. So that's the proof for Rav's view. And the Gemara is going to change tracks a bit. We'll look at it. But this is more or less the end of our section. So you have four views. The last view said by Rava with a proof, there's a good chance you're going to poskin like that, right? For those three reasons. Rava is very significant. It's last. No one's arguing on it. And it even has a proof. So, you know, very, very likely we're going to end up saying that all four of these uh, are in. You need to say on Tanakh, Medrash, Mishnah, and Gemara. Now, the Gemara continues, and this is less central to our topic, but it's just a very important Gemara. So we'll take a look. My Mavare, what is the Berchaz Torah? Right, we're talking about what, whether you need to say a bracha before learning. Well, what, what do you say if you do say a Berchaz Torah? Amar Rav Yehuda, Shmuel, here's the text. Asher Kitchan Mitzvah Sivan, La Sok Torah. Right? This is sort of a straightforward Berchaz Mitzvah. God sanctified us with commandments and commanded us to uh, deal or to delve into the words of Torah. That's, and that's the bracha you say. Okay, that's the first view. Rabbi Yochanan Messiah Bahachi. Rabbi Yochanan would end that, would sort of continue that with the following text. Ha'arevna Hashem Elokeinu, es devrei Torah shabifinu. God, please make sweet the words of your Torah in our mouths. Ufifios amcha beis Yisrael, and all the mouths of your people Israel. V'niya anachlu mitzetz, ain mitzetz, so ain amcha beis Yisrael. We and our, our descendants and our descendants' descendants of the whole nation of Israel should all be kulanu yodei shemecha ve'oskei Torah sech. We should all know, uh, know your name and deal with your Torah. Baruch atah Hashem ha'melamed Torah le'amo Yisrael. Blessed are you, God. Uh, who teaches Torah to his nation Israel. So that's a different bracha, right? It's not, not just the Birch the Mitzvah, but this idea of Milam made Torah Lamo Yisrael. Maybe it's appreciation, Shevach uh, Veoda, maybe. And um, and then, um, or maybe the Harevna maybe makes it a Birch uh, Sanen, and some have suggested this is maybe not, not uh, literal, but you know, you're asking God to make it sweet. So maybe there's, a, there's some sort of benefit there. Anyway, that's the second suggestion, and it's sort of a continuation of the first one. And Rav Hamnuna Amar, a third bracha, Asher Bachar Banami Kol Amim Minas Alenu Es Torah So, right? God who chose us among the nations and gave us uh, the, God's Torah. Baruch Atah Hashem No Sein Al Torah. Blessed are you, God, giver of the Torah. And um, so this, I think, uh, you know, is is also known from the Berachas Torah that one says when getting an Aliyah, right? That so, the suggestion would be that you say the same thing before learning Torah in the morning that you would that one would say. When, uh, when getting an aliyah. And it's a little bit of a different focus, right? There's a focus on chosenness here and the giving of the Torah rather than the study of Torah. The focus is on the giving of Torah, the choosing of Israel. It's a bit more historical. This one almost certainly is a Shevach does, appreciation for God. Uh, and Amr Rav Hamnuna, Rav Hamnuna, who was the one who suggested this bracha. So, I mean, I don't know if he said it himself, but presumably someone else came up with it and that's the bracha he would say. But then commenting on this, he says, Amr Rav Hamnuna, Zohi ma'la me'ula sheva brachos. This is the greatest of all brachas, right? So if you want someone to ever ask you, what's the best bracha? If you want to, if you, you know, you can say, well, according to Rav Hamnuna, the best bracha is Asher Bachar Banu, etc. And the Gemara concludes, Hilkach Limrinhu Likulhu. The Gemara sometimes does this, and Modim de Rabbanon is another example. It says, you know what? This is such a good idea. All these brachas are so wonderful. Let's say all of them, you know? And that's the, that's the standard practice, uh, as I'm sure. Uh, many of you know to say these three brachos and put them together, whether they count as two or three is a question. I think the standard practice is not to say ha-revna, but viharevna, which connects brachos one and two, so it's technically two, but it's three different, you know, three different uh, themes or suggestions that are thrown together. Um, and Chaya has a question. Um, I'm just surprised by the idea of being like, oh, what a lovely thing. Say extra brachos just because of like the usual like minimalism because of the risk of like shema shem Um Yeah. So yeah, I'm just even a little, a little taken aback by that. Yeah, it's a fair question. Um, we'll see a couple of suggestions in a bit as to how the three the three brachas are really three different themes or do, fulfill three different things. But yeah, definitely 
the default is, you know, not to add, you know, when in doubt, do without, right? Suffolk brachos the hakel. Um, so it is a little unusual that we'd say do them all. And maybe there's more of a logic, you know, this, this is the short version. We're not really delving into this part of the Gemara. They, well, it's, it's all great. These, you know, these are all good. Let's say them all. Um, maybe there's something deeper that's conceptual that would explain why they're each necessary. Um, so we'll, we'll see one or two quick suggestions of that, but we're not going to be focusing on that. But yeah, it's, it's a, your, your instinct is right. And it's a, it's a good question. Um, I mean, you yeah, it'd be interesting to sort of look at, um, you know, like bracha minimalism and is that fully true in the Gemara? Is that more of a later thing? But definitely, certainly the later commentaries are, are a little troubled by this. So your, yeah, your instincts are right. Um, so that's the Gemara. And we're going to focus primarily on the question of which parts of Torah would trigger this obligation to say the bracha and a variety of commentaries that get into that. You know, I think when we read it, we sort of had this, you know, more or less a couple of suggestions as to what would work or not. Um, but there'll, there'll be other suggestions too. Um, and then we'll have also some new areas. We talked about four different areas. We'll have a couple of new areas that didn't come up there um, that we can get into, which, which makes it even more exciting. So uh, we'll start with Rashi, unless there's other questions. Um, but uh, we'll start with Rashi. And Rashi says, Medrash, what is Medrash? Who karov lemikra? And this is what we were saying. Why, why would you say the view that you would say Tanakh, but not Medrash? I understand Tanakh is special, but Tanakh and Medrash, but nothing else. Why? Rashi says, who karov lemikra? Medrash is close to the biblical text, because it's commenting on it. Kigon Mechilta, right? The Mechilta, which is the commentary on Shmos. The Sifra, that's what we saw Sifra, the Beirav, the commentary on Vayikra. The Sifre, uh, which is the commentary on Bamidbar and Dvarim. She Midrashe Mikraos, right? It's the, it's the uh, drash. It's the textual exposition of the biblical text. And Rashi doesn't quite say this is the reason, but he implies it, Karv Mikra, right? It's close enough. That's why you might think Tanakh and Medrash, but nothing else, because... Only Bible and things that directly comment on Bible would count. Maybe according to that view, um, medieval commentaries would also qualify, right? Medieval commentaries on Tanakh and Parshanin. Maybe that would count too, because uh, it's directly commenting on the uh, biblical text. Even if you take like a Malbin, that's like, you know, 10,000 words for every word in Chumash, maybe that would still count um, because, uh, you know, because it's commenting on Chumash. So that's, that, that seems to be one explanation of Medrash. That's Rashi. Let's continue in Rashi. Um, we'll skip this next Rashi that's not directly relevant, but he says, right? The view that all four, even Gemara, why? What's the logic? Why does Gemara apply? Right? Like what we were saying before, Jews are the, the, are the people of the book. That book might be the Talmud. So, you know, how could you not say Beres Torah and Gemara? Gemara is the main part of Torah. That's where Hora comes. That's where teaching or, you know, practical rulings come from the Gemara. Um, uh, yeah, overall, at least. And now Rashi spells this out. Gemara, Hainu Svaras, Tame, Mishnah. What is Gemara? Gemara uh, usually means to think, right? Uh, gemara is to think. So Gemara is the Svaras, Tame, Mishnah. It's the logic, the bringing out of the logic of the reasons of the Mishnah, right? I mean, if, you, if you've ever learned Gemara, that's pretty clearly what's going on, right? You start with the Mishnah. I mean, it's not only that, but that's a lot of what's going on. You start with the Mishnah. How do we know this? Why is this true? How do we explain the two sides of the debate here? Let's bring in other texts that might argue you're trying to explicate the Mishnah. Um, so that's one thing it does. Vitirutse Mishnayos Hasoso Zoezo. It also resolves uh, Mishnahs that contradict one another, right? That's also part of Gemara, which is also in some sense ex explication. Vichisura Mechsera. And Gemara also is trying to fix the text of the Mishnah, right? If there's, you say, well, you know, there's missing words here. We need a, we need a, you know, modify the text, whether you're actually modifying the text or suggesting the text should be understood a certain way, whatever exactly you're doing, that's Gemara. And at the end of the day, that's all part of this larger uh, place from which Hora'a goes forth. It's implicit in Rashi, doesn't spell this out, but the view that would say Mishnah, but not Gemara would say, look, Mishnah is the core. Gemara is the penumbra, it's the additional commentary. That's not important, not important enough. It's just not quite the same core Torah to require a bracha. Um, so that's Rashi. Again, we're reading into Rashi a little bit, but I think it's reasonable. Uh, and that's, I think, the straightforward reading of the Gemara, as we were saying, right? Tanakh is Tanakh. Uh, Medrash is a commentary on Tanakh. Mishnah, you'd expand and say, you know, not just the corpus of Tanakh and commentaries, but even the corpus of Mishnah, because that's where Sak comes from. And Gemara, the question of Gemara is whether a commentary on that is core enough to be included or not. Um, and I think that's more or less how we read the Gemara. I think it's a, it's a relatively straightforward approach. Let's look at the riff now. The riff actually will have a slightly different text of the Gemara that will solve a problem we had before and also help move this discussion forward a little bit. 
So this will be sound mostly familiar, but somewhat different. Amar Rav Huna, Lumikra Tzarech Levarech Mishnah Ule Talmud Eino Tzarech. You say Rav Huna's views. You say Berachas Tzarech on on Mikra and Bible Tanach, but not on Mishnah and Talmud. Uh, okay, that's view number one. Rabbi Yochanan Amar the Mishnah Tzarech Levarech the Talmud Eino Tzarech Levarech. View number two is you also need to say a bracha on Mishnah, but not Talmud, meaning presumably Tanach and Mishnah, but not Talmud. Then Rabbi Lazar Omer Afilu the Talmud Tzarech Levarech, Lemedrash Ein Tzarech Levarech. The third view is you also need to say a bracha on Talmud, so Tanach. Mishnah, Gemara, but not Medrash. And then the final view, the Rav Amar, Afilu Medrash, Nami Tzarech Levarich. You also need to say a bracha on, on Medrash. And notice this is Rav, not Rava. This will be significant because the Amar, Rav Chia Bar Ashi, Rav Chia Bar Ashi said, Zinus Hagin Evokimna Kamei de Rav. I was in front of Rav. This is Rav himself didn't tell us this. We're reconstructing Rav's view based on this story from Rav Chia Bar Ashi. He says, I used to learn with Rav. We learn the Tanuim Pirkin, the Sifra, the Beirav. We learn uh, Sifra. The Kadam Umashi Yadei Umavarech Umasilan Pirkin, and he would wash his hands and say Berchsor, and then he would learn. So we see from here that Rav obviously thought that he needed to say Berchsor Torah before learning Medrash. So, um, other than the name difference, what's different in this riff? Yeah. Uh, Medrash is like the last option instead of the second one. Yeah, the order is different, right? Instead of Tanakh, Medrash, Mishnah, Gemara, it's Tanakh, Mishnah, Gemara, and then Medrash is last. Uh, and that, you know, and of course, not just order, it's also what the first three views, you know, what's the, what do the second and third views hold? Um, so if before we were saying that like, that uh, Medrash would be included because it's sort of an extension of Tanakh, doesn't seem like that's what's going on here, right? It seems like Tanakh is Tanakh. Mishnah, Gemara, and then Medrash is somehow, you know, it's somehow not as central, not as important. Maybe it sneaks in the back door. It's at least possible to read it that way. One thing this solves is the problem we had reading in Gemara that, wait a second, how is, if you say there's a debate about whether you need to say on on, uh, Med, on on Gemara, and how are you going to prove that by a story about Medrash, right? So we did a little hand waving and said, well, you know, maybe Medrash is sort of the same as Gemara, but I mean, that. It wasn't what the Gemara implied earlier. On this gear set, it makes a lot more sense, right? Uh, the last case is Medrash, and the proof to that is a story about Medrash. That works just fine. Um, so, fine. So, that, that gear set is worth being aware of, and a lot of the later I'm going to talk about it as well. And then the riff concludes here the Kasa of Rav Hai Gon, right? Rav Hai, one of the Gaonim, one of the important Gaonim, he wrote, De Hilchasa, Kavase de Rav, we rule like Rav, namely, you say Berksa Torah also on Medrash. So, not only Tanakh, not only Mishnah, not only Gemara, but also on Medrash. Umin Haga Kavase, the practice is like him. So this is the, the Rav, ha, Rav Haigon and the Rif, poskening that you say Berchus Torah on all of the above, which again, even though this is Rav and not Rava, Rav is also pretty important. Um, you know, sort of be interesting if you said like, who's, uh, I think both Rav and, and Rava are sort of top tier in terms of, uh, you know, uh, coming up a lot in the, in, the, in the Gemara and winning a lot of Machloko. So none of this is surprising. But it's worth noting that that's not only the, the Psak as Rav Hai said, but also the Minhag. Um, the Rush is going to say similarly, the Rav has Argirsa. So he just sort of has Argirsa the Gemara, um, which, you know, he ends with Gemara. And then he, he has this Ravat saying that to do Gemara also in the story with uh, Rav Chia Bar Ashi about Medrash, which doesn't quite work. And then, he, but he also ends by saying the Kasa Rav Hai, the Hilchas Akabase. The Rush may have gotten this from the Rif. Um, but uh, so, but he has his own, he has our gersa, so to speak, of the Gemara, our order with some of the problematics there. Um, we'll take a look at a couple of commentaries on the rush. Um, yes, uh, Alana points out uh, very correctly that another upside of the Rift's view is that it's a little smoother or cleaner to say, to say Rav holds, that you also say Berkstar on Medrash, and then to bring the proof from a story with Rav talking about Medrash, as opposed to Rava saying, that you even say a bracha on Gemara and then have a story about someone else, about Rav with Medrash, right? So number one, the discrepancy between Gemara and Medrash. Number two, the discrepancy between Rava and Rav. I mean, it could just be, you know, argument from authority. If Rav did it, that's good enough for, for Rava. But uh, but yeah, it's, it's a little less smooth than in the riffs here, so that's true. Okay, so a couple of commentaries on the rush here. Uh, get into a couple of relevant issues for us. Here, uh, this in the Dere Hamudos, we're not going to really get into this, but this is just 
you know, if you're if you're ever learning about Birkas Ator, these are important questions that he sort of raises in passing here in a convenient way. So I figured I'll throw that out there. Um, right, that's only, you only need to say, you only need to say if you're actually daven, if you're actually learning. If you're davening, then not. What does it mean to daven? Tanakh, well, let's say Tehillim. Let's say you're saying Tehillim. Not because you're trying to understand it. You're just, uh, you know, you committed to saying Tehillim for, uh, you know, for uh, whatever, for uh, someone who's sick or just because you feel like saying over Tehillim. Or even in davening, right? You're up to your psukid zimra, and psukid zimra is mostly a bunch of tehillim, right? And you're not thinking about what it means. You're just saying you're, as they say, uh, you're davening it up, right? You're not you're not really thinking. You're just uh, going through the the uh, the motions. Hopefully your lips are moving, um, saying the words. So in that case, you don't need to say a bracha. If it's not learning. That's davening. It doesn't count. No need for a bracha there. Um, I mean, the way we do it, you know, the way we do it in general is you say berachas Torah. After St. Birch's Torah, you learn, you have, hopefully you learn, um, uh, you know, Tanakh, Mishnah, and uh, some uh, Brisa, and, uh, you know, you're ready where Yotze before. But if this ever comes up, you wake up before Davin and you want to say Tehillim, technically, you don't need to say Birch's Torah if you're just saying Tehillim. Fine. Now, uh, the Arrived Kassav Tzarek Levar, the Arrived thinks you do. So it's a little complicated. It's a whole debate about this. I don't know if there's a clear, well, yeah, right? So the, there's no clear Psach. Mumasik Hashulchan Aruch. The Nachum Lachu Shalolo Mar Kodim Shivari. Shulchan says better to play it safe and say Birchas Torah before while actually learning something real, which we generally do after saying Birchas Torah. The Rama Kasav Deminog Shalolo Lachu. Rama says not to worry about that. Because even if you ask Slichos, because during Slichos, what happens during Slichos? You you say Slichos at least in theory. Let's say you wake up early for Slichos. So you say Slichos before you even say Birchas Torah, and the Slichos have all sorts of psukim in there. But you're not learning those psukim, you're davening those psukim. So, and you don't say Brechsa Torah. Again, there may be different practices in different places, but the Ramas says that's the standard practice. Um, you know, certainly if you're, if you stay up late and you're saying Slichos at midnight, then this wouldn't be relevant. Or if you say Slichos later in the day, you definitely should have just said Brechsa Torah before. But at least in theory, in the time of the Rama, they weren't Choshesh for that. So that's how he wants to pass him. Because of Atur, Shu Nahag Miyad Achar Brechsa El Kaina Shama, the Varach Brechsa Torah. I think this is what we do. The Torah writes right after El Kaina Shabbat is part of, I mean, wherever exactly you do it, but right after, uh, you know, somewhere in your uh, in your morning, you say Berch Torah and that works. Because Ramash and Lashanos, eh, you don't need to do that. You can say it at some other point. Um, uh, I see a question, Matovu, right? What about Matovu? So this would be the same question, right? I, I personally say Berch Torah before I, I would say Matovu. I don't see any, any reason, I mean, a little bit this debate here, but uh, certainly if you want to play it safe, uh, or if you actually think about the words when you say matovu, instead of just uh, reciting them, there's there's a good reason to say Birch Torah before. Um, and Shema, uh, certainly one should say, well, right, so so the Gemara talked about that a little bit. If you're saying Shema is part of davening, you sort of have a backup Birch Torah from, from uh, Ava, Ava Solem, or Ava Rabba, um, rather. And, but in any event, let's say you're just getting up, let's say you uh, you want to say, you know, Whatever you get up late, you want to say Birchas Kriya Shema. Sorry, you want to say Shema before this man or something. Um, yeah, probably better to say Birchas Torah first. But maybe this would also fall under this debate between the Shulchan Aruch and the Ramah. So there might be might be a little wiggle room if you don't want to if you want to rely on the Ramah. Um, okay, so that's one point, one debate that's relevant and just I thought worth raising about Birchas Torah. Ne- next issue: Ve'akosev b'divrei Torah. Now, let's say you're writing, you're taking notes. Uh, you're, you're writing up your own chidushim. You have, uh, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night, you just realize you have a new approach to Sefer Shmuel, and you want to write it down or type it up quickly before you forget at 2 a.m. But you didn't say Berch Satora yet, or maybe make it 6 a.m. So, you know, after the time, it's not clear exactly at what point you're supposed to say, is it when you wake up? Is it, is it after, is it in the morning? But either way, you want to write, you want to write Divrei Torah without a Berch Satora. What's the din? What's the rule? Hakasav Abu Dirham, you need to say bracha because of agur. The mehayer, but the Torah ain't sarak levarich. The here love kedibur dami. The other view says the agur says if you're just thinking Torah, thinking as opposed to saying, writing presumably is the same as thinking. Some people might d- disagree, but let's assume for our purposes, writing you're not saying it, you're just either thinking it or writing it. That's not like speech, so you don't need to say berachas Torah on that. Come perik gimel simi dal because of a ram perik kol tzlam and the yachol lifsok din kol sheino omer iker tam shel davar. And the Ron even goes a step further and says, 
even if you are talking words of Torah, but you're not really saying the relevant things. You know, so someone says, well, um, because the story there, Aphrodite is, uh, he's in a bathhouse. And they say, uh, you know, they say, well, I start asking all sorts of things. He says, in Meshivim B'merchatz. We don't respond, you know, we don't talk about Torah in a bathhouse. You know, people aren't appropriately clothed. And then the, the Gemara asks, well, in Meshivim B'merchatz is a halacha. So why was he telling him that in the bathhouse, right? He's telling him that you can't talk Torah in a bathhouse. In a bathhouse, recursively, that's a problem. And so that's, that, I think that's where the Ron comes in. I didn't look this up, but I think that's what he's referring to. The Ron comes in and says that, uh, He's not learning. He's just telling him practically. He's telling him the conclusion. That doesn't count as Torah. That's, you know, that's a practical, that's a practical uh, ruling that uh, no thought went into it. So that also, that also counts as mere hearer. You know, it does not really sharing Torah, even though he spoke it. Okay, so that's another out um, because of, right, or like someone, right, someone, uh, like, you know, parallel scenarios, let's say uh, someone asks you a question in halacha and you haven't said Birch Zatora yet. So someone says, well, you know, what's the halach in this case? You can say, well, I haven't said Birch Zatora yet. So what? And you're not supposed to say, you're not supposed to learn Torah before saying Birch Zatora. You, you, I think you'd be allowed to say that based on this run, right? You're not, it's a halacha. We, we just learned this halacha, but okay, but you're just doing it in a, in a practical way, not in a, in a Torah way. Um, because of Agur, B'Shem Mari Mulin, Din Nashim Nami Mivarachos Birch Zatora. Touched on a little bit last week, we, we spoke about uh, the uh, different scenarios of Nashim and Torah. Women also say Birchaz Torah. Right, as we saw last week, the uh, sort of classical view that there's no obligation uh, for women. There's no Chiv Talmud Torah in in the in the sense of a mitzvah to study Torah per se. Although there are several other reasons why it would be obligatory, um, sort of from from uh, other directions. But still, they say Birchaz Torah. Why? Shelo Amru Hamalami Bita Torah Kilam the Tiflos Ella Ala Torah Shabal Peh. The, the rule against studying Torah is only for Torah Shabbat and not Torah Shabbat So if women can study Torah Shabbat Shav, they should say Birch Torah on that. The rule, the statement of Lasso to delve in, you don't really delve, I mean, you know, some people maybe do, but at least sort of, uh, you know, Tanakh is something that you, you read. Some people maybe do, but at least sort of, you know, Tanakh is something that you read more than study. You study Mishnah, you read Torah. That's sort of the standard language. So the idea of lasso to sort of delve in, to, deep, to deepen your engagement, maybe that sounds more like Torah Shabbat Ped, the oral Torah. Still, mikol makom ein l'shanos mat bracha. You know, even if, let's say, someone's only going to learn Tanakh, or women, he's assuming would only learn Tanakh, uh, you still say lasso, that's also good. for od, ki hein mevarachos al kriyas karbanos, the tefillah kinei karbanos teknum. Right, also, you're saying karbanos in davening, right? You'll, you'll say the... Uh, I'm not sure if he's referring to Sukkim about Karbanos, or he may also be referring to the Gemaras about Karbanos. Nowadays, uh, the, the Karbanos has fallen into disuse. Most people don't read, don't read uh, Karbanos, but um, uh, if you do, there's a lot of Chazals about Pitumak Torres and this, that, and the other thing, and um, that would be Talmud Torah. That's even Torah Shabal Peh. Vehein Chayavos Pitzvila. They have to daven, so they have to say Karbanos, so they end up learning these things. This is part of davening. Definitely women, right? The smog, we saw this last time, who need to study the halachas that are practical for them. So davening is practical. So you're supposed to daven. So definitely you would do it for that. Okay, I see there's a lot of questions here. Um, so uh, question of which prayer is Birch Torah? So that we saw that in the Gemara earlier. The three different, the three different, uh, uh, three different brachos. Asher uh, Bachar uh, Banu, uh, right? That one being the third one on the list. And uh, uh, let's, let's just go up and look at it. All right, the three Mai Mavarech. The first is Asher Kishon Mitzvah, but Sivanu Lasok with the very Sora. The second piece is Harevna, Shemakin Esther Yisrael with Finu, etc. And then that concludes with Hamulami Torah Lamo Yisrael. And then the third bracha is Asher Bachar Banu, Asher Bachar Banu, Bracha Dashem No Senator. So those are the three brachos or two brachos, but that, that's when we talk about Berkhazat Torah, we're talking about that. That uh, collection of brachos. Um, the um, yeah, the Dibri Hamus. I actually didn't look it up. Is I, I assume it's a relatively late Achron commenting on the rush. So that's why he brings together all of these different uh, different uh, postkim, which was helpful for us. So that's why I brought it in. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you could get similar if you went through the Shulchan Aruch. You'd pick up some more things. Would just take a bit longer. So this is a bit of a shortcut for a bit of a tangent. Um, the next piece commenting on the on the rush. Ma'adana Yom Tov. Um, yeah. So, right, he gets into the issue of Girsa a little bit. 
what's the proper girsa and do you have the riffs girsa or the other one um and vikashali rava right this is on our girsa actually according to rava the amar afli gmar it's right my my mi uh uh me uh me da berkha sifra the be rav um yeah so sheino gmara ela brisos why is he quoting sifra the be rav that's a bright that's not a that's not a gmar that's a dinu tars quantum that's a brisa or I'd say it's a medrash halacha. That's not a gemara. What do you? How is that a proof? Um, and and he quotes Rashi, who says that uh, t- right Torah's konim is sifra de beirav. So we know what it is. It's not gemara. It's sifra. Um, fine. And it, well, he, right. He gives the explanation. Why is it called sifra de beirav? The book of the house of the rabbi. Everyone in the beirav. Everyone in the house of the rabbi. Everyone in the base medrash knows sifra. I don't think that's true nowadays, but. Uh, um, um, yeah, so that's that's that. But oh, the ayin ode, the comment, fine, he has another question, but then he goes to the so he has Argamara and he asks the question, Argamara. He quotes the Rifts Gersa and he says why it's preferable, as we saw. Um, fine, and then he says, This is this will be interesting as well. The Kasu, tell me they Yona, uh, um, yeah, so. He goes through some of the views. The Mishnah Tzarek Levarech. So why would you need to say for Mishnah? Remember what we had. Tanakh, then Mishnah. So what's the view for Tanakh and Mishnah? Or maybe Tanakh, Medrash, and Mishnah? Sheba Mishnah, Gamkein, Mefarish, Hapsukim. Why do you need to say Mirkas Torah and Mishnah? Not what we were saying before, based on Rashi, more or less. That Mishnah sort of is its own canon that's worthy of study, right? Just like Tanakh and commentaries, maybe. It counts as Talmud Torah with Mirkas Torah. Mishnah also is a canon, is, a, is an important canon in these Mirkas Torah. On its own, even though it's independent. On this view from Talmud Rabbeinu Yona, why do you say Birch Torah Mishnah? Because Mishnah also explains Psukim, not all the time, but a lot of the time, at least indirectly, directly, Mishnah ends up commenting on Psukim. So on this view, Mishnah, just like Medrash, is an extension of Mikra, right? The Midrashim are an extension of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, Tanakh. Here, Mishnah is a further extension of Tanakh. So that's a really interesting idea. Umisham, lo mitame a mitzvah. So you learn the reasons for the mitzvahs from learning Mishnah, which comments on Tanakh. So that would be that view. That's why you say Birch Torah Mishnah. Avo, ligmara, shu perisha Mishnah, lo. Gemara is not commenting on Psukim. I mean, it sometimes is, but fine, maybe less so. Gemara is commenting on Mishnah. So it's a, it's a further step removed. That ain't sarch levarich al perish. That's a further step removed. You don't need to say Birch Torah on that. So that's that view. Right, that's the third view that you have Tanakh, Medrash, uh, and Mishnah. What about the fourth view? The Amar, Rava's view. What do you mean? Tanakh, Gemara also explains Sukim. So this view, all four views really think that you that what is Torah? The only thing that's Torah is Tanakh. It happens to be that everything else is an extension of that because Medrash, Mishnah, Gemara are all commenting on Tanakh. But essentially, there's one corpus in Judaism that counts as Torah. It's Tanakh. And everything else is just accretions, commentaries, explications thereof, which is, I think, different than what we saw in Rashi. Rashi goes out of his way to say, no, Talmud, Gemara is its own thing. It it's, counts as Torah on its own, not because it explains Pesachim. It may also do that. That's fine. But it, it independently qualifies as Torah because it's, uh, it's, you know gives you these practical rulings on how to live your life. That, that should be Torah too. It doesn't need it to connect back to Tanakh, but the Madani Yantif says it does. So that's a very, uh, it's an interesting debate here, different reasons. Again, in, in practice, it comes out the same. He says, Umaskinan, we conclude that Filu Medrash Tarach Levarech, the Medrash Gamkin Lomay Psukim. So he's working now with the Rips Girsa where Medrash is last, but it comes out the same. Great question, Chai, about Agadatah. We'll get there uh, by the end of this year, hopefully. So Mikal Vachomer, Migzer Shavim, Amidus, Atar Adrashis, Bahen, Adkan. Right, so what he's quoting uh, this Talmud of Rainer Yona, um, the, it's it's uh, because Medrash, Medrash and Mishnah and Gemara are included to the extent that they comment on Tanakh, and you might say Gemara is too far removed, doesn't comment enough. But that's it, there's no there's no second canon, so to speak. It's all one big canon. Torah is one big thing, and if you comment enough on Torah, then you qualify for birch, for requiring Birch Zat Torah. Um, fine. Yeah, fine. It goes back to the other Girsa. I don't think we need to look at that piece at the end. Let's move now. So I think that's a very important debate we saw, right? Two different basic frameworks here. Does everything need to revolve around Tanakh, or is there a separate canon, Mishnah and Gemara, possibly? 
So that's one important question. Now let's look at the Chidushe Hara'a. The Hara'a is one of the important Rishonim. We don't have his commentary on most of the Shas, but it gets quoted a lot. We do have his commentary on Brachos. Happens to be side point. Brachos has the most commentaries of any Masechta because, uh, you know, sort of think about it. If you wanted to write a commentary on all of Shas, so you'd sit down and start with Brachos and uh, however far you'd get, you'd get something on Brachos. So there's, uh, if you look, like any, you know, any place like Sfarim, basically any place that, that um, like classical commentaries that were written, uh, Brachos is, is uh, far and ahead, has the most commentaries. I think probably if you look more, more contemporarily, there's probably more sperm on the classical yeshivas that are learned, uh, classic mesephtas that are learned in yeshivas, but that's sort of artificial. Brachos is, has a lot of material, including in this case, the Ra. I don't know if that's why. I think he wrote on a lot of things, just for whatever reason, don't have it. Fine. Amr of Hunul, Mikrat Sarkh Levarach, Mishnah, Ain Sarkh Levarach. The first view, Tanakh, but not Mishnah, um, or I mean, on that Girsa, right? He's working with the Girsa of the Rift, Parish. The Iker Torah, Torah Shevach Sav, Velet Sarkh Levarach. This view is, um, is, uh, uh, that uh, Torah is Tanakh. That's the main Torah. Torah Shabbat Peh is secondary. It's something else. It doesn't count. So you don't say Berksa Torah on it. Or Belazar Amr, the mission at Tzarech Levarech. Belazar says, for mission, you also say Berksa Perish. Shu Iker Torah Shabbat Peh. So it's, that's the core of Torah Shabbat Peh. And now this is very fascinating. He says, Ve'akol Hiskimu Aleh. There's consensus about Mishnah, as opposed to what? Le Medrash ain't Tzarech Levarech. For Medrash, you don't say a Berksa. Why Perish? Medrash is, it's not that it's not important enough. It's definitely important enough according to this view. What's the issue? It's that it's too controversial. People can't agree on Medrash, whereas Mishnah, people do agree. Now, I don't know, if you've studied Mishnah, there's a lot of debates in the Mishnah. Um, but I guess, I guess uh, what the Ra'ah would say is that there's enough consensus about enough of the important things that is good enough. Whereas Medrash, there's more things are up for grabs uh, or something like that. You know, it's a little, a little surprising, but, but for him, what's, what's fascinating is it needs to be consensus Torah to qualify for Birchus Torah. That's not at all obvious. I might've said, I don't care if you agree or not. The debate is part of Torah itself, right? Beishame, Beishel, we don't possibly Beishel, but we don't possibly Beishame rather, but what Beishame says is part of Torah. Elu ve'elu de'elu kim chayim. You might've said something like that. And it seems like the Ra'ah, depends how you read the Ra'ah, but it seems like some aspect uh, in some ways, he would disagree with that. He would say, no, if it's not consensus, if it's not bottom line halacha, then there's no berks of Torah. It's a waste of your time. That may be a little too strong, waste of your time. I don't know if he would say that, but at least on this on this view, there's no berks of Torah. Of course, we paskin that you do say berks of Torah on Medrash. So maybe this isn't so relevant in practice, but at least in theory, a very interesting idea. That's the Ra'a. Um, the Me'iri and the, uh, the Drisha who quotes Talmudir, the quotes of Yoni here, I'm not going to read them inside, but they respond to Chai's question from before, um, which, is, which is the question of why do you need three brachos? The suggestion is made, one is for Mikra, one is for Mishnah, and one is for Midrash. Um, it doesn't work that well. It, like the text is, doesn't obviously tie into that, but that's a suggestion that's made by a couple of Rishonim. Let's look at another explanation of our Gemara from uh, the, uh, the Rav, Rabbi Salvechik, the grid. Um, and uh, we'll just look at the underlying parts for reasons of time. So he says, Yeshla Ayim, and this is not written by him, it's written by students, but based on Shirim, he gave Yeshla Ayim, Meshitis Hamorai, Mais for us, and Yisro Plutasa. Okay, so what's the basis of the debate? Benira, the Yeshla Fire says, Shitas Rav Huna, the first few, the Varkin Bishop Torah, Rak al Mikra, only on Tanakh, nothing else. There's two ways of explaining that. One, Aleph, the Sovr Shikh to Kanas Birkhsa Torah, Niskina al Tarish Birksav, the Korim Bitsibur. Maybe the only idea of Birkhsa Torah, you know, I said before, like, oh, according to one of the texts, Birchus Torah in the morning is the same as Birchus Torah on a Sefer Torah. So you go a step further than that. According to that first view of Rav Huna, they're the same thing. The only Birchus Torah is the Birchus Torah you say on a Sefer Torah. There's no other Birchus Torah. If you're publicly reading Torah, you say Birchus Torah. If you're doing anything else, there's no Birchus Torah. That could be the explanation, right? So only Tanakh, um, right? Half Torah, you have a slightly different bracha, but we do, right? We do this. Um, there's brachas on Torah, there's brachas on Nevi'im, there's brachas on Suvim, which we sometimes say for Megillahs. Um, at least, uh, at least Megillahs Esther, if not other Megillahs. Um, so that's that's what Berachos Torah is. There's no other Berachos Torah than Berachos Torah on public Torah reading. That might be what he means. That's one suggestion. Um, and then Rav Huna Sover the Rakel Torah Shemichsav Davi Chefta Shel Torah Shenikreis Betzibur Chal Din Bracha. He takes. I think he extends this a bit. He says anything that could be read publicly 
namely all of Tanakh, qualifies as a Hefzah Shel Torah, an object of Torah, right? If you're like, you know, the standards of Torah qualification, things that can be read publicly qualify, other things don't. So that's one explanation of Rav Huna, that first view. Another explanation, this is a very uh, creative and idiosyncratic view of the Rav that fits with a lot of other things he wrote. He says, the Berks of Torah niskin are rak al Torah the blessing on Torah is only for the written Torah. Why? When you learn Tanakh, you're reading it. There, there's an act that's a mitzvah. The act of reading Tanakh counts as the mitzvah. Let's say Sidei Chova, right? Let's say in Shul, someone's laning the Torah. You have to read it in order to fulfill the mitzvah, right? Just thinking about it doesn't count, right? You say like, okay, now we're doing Shlishi. Someone claps, everyone thinks about Shlishi in their head. You did not fulfill reading the Torah. It would be definitely an interesting experiment to try that, but it wouldn't work. So, um, right, so that's true. Um, uh, Let's say you're learning Mishnah. You have your Mishnah open, you're reading it, you're reading it, you don't say anything, you're not doing anything. There's no action, right? Reading is not really an action. You, you know, your eyes are looking at a page. There's no action that's done over uh, over studying Torah Peh. The key of mitzvahs limit to Torah Peh. Ain't well Torah's mice. We shouldn't should sleep on Havana Bilvad. Let's say you even are reading the words and you don't know what they mean. You didn't learn Torah. You're just moving your mouth for the, for for Torah Shabbat Peh. You have to understand it. So it all depends whether you understand it or not. There's no action of understanding. That's a result. That's something that happens. It's a phenomenon, but it's not an action. Right. And often brachos are only said on things that involve actions. Right. So. Uh, not always, but at least bracha mitzvah, bracha said before mitzvah, which bracha said might be, isn't done, uh, isn't done. Uh, you don't say bracha on things that don't have an action often. So maybe this, that's why, according to this view, learning Torah, which is about the action of reading it, you do say bracha. Learning Torah Shabbat Peh, there's no action, you don't. In that case, that would have nothing to do with our larger topic, right? That doesn't say this is Torah, this is not Torah, this is a different level of Torah. It's nothing to do with that. It's simply about whether you did an action or not. It's sort of a secondary issue, right? It doesn't directly connect to whether it's Torah or not. That's a second explanation. He gives a whole analysis in Rashi as to whether there's a mice or not. Very interesting. We're going to skip that. Um, so that's th that's the first view, right? That was all two explanations in that first view, that Torah, yes, everything else, no. Or Tanakh, yes, everything else, no. What about Uzzar Sarbi Yochanan, the Afla Mishnah Tzarek Lebarich, Allah Talmud, Eno Tzarek Lebarich, right? So you need to say bracha for Tanakh and Mishnah, but not Talmud. What's the logic? You talk a lot of the afbelimud Torah Shaval Peh, Shekyuma, he rak by Havanas Hale, become a Khobli Mishnah, Halos, Shame Mysa Mitzvah. Maybe there is an action in learning Torah Shaval Peh. How so? You're not reading, the, you're not saying anything, you're just understanding what's the action there. Mishim Shalomid Amenas Lasos. It's sort of like a, you know, it's sort of a cheating. You cheat and you get an action. Why? Because you're learning Mishnah in order to be able to keep Mishnah in practice. So keeping mission in practice down the line, that's the action. The action is going to be later. It's not usually how Berchus HaMitzvah and Amaisa works, but okay. Um, but based on that, Lishitaso, Mishnah, right? Mishnah is short, direct, to the point, do this, don't do that. Right? That's 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 the Mishnah is Mishnah is short, direct, to the point, do this, don't do that. That's Limit Al-Manas Lasos. You're learning in order to do. It's pretty clear what the instructions are. Masha Enke Metalmud, but Gemara, the Enhora Psukha, that's not really a ruling. That's sort of like a whole discussion. There's no bracha. It's not, it's not enough. Uh, it's not directed enough at action to count as based on action. The Rava Sover, the Afla Talmud Sarach Right, Rava says, even for Gemara, you need to say bracha. Okay, it's still close enough to action. It's going to lead to action down the line. That will be the debate there whether. Mishnah yes and Gemara no, or Mishnah yes and Gemara yes as well. Um, just try to get through the Rav and then maybe we'll take a question if we have time. Um, another explanation, he has a whole other, this, right, we saw two explanations of the first debate and uh, a suggested explanation of the third debate in the Gemara. And he says, Another explanation, I think, for the whole Gemara based on the Grach of Chaim Soloveitchik, the Rav's grandfather. The Berch said, Torah ain't a bracha al kiyum mitzvah's Talmud Torah. Right, there's a whole, I mean, we're not, if we were studying Berchus Torah in more depth, we'd get into this. Is Berchus Torah a bracha on the action of studying, like we saw in that most recent answer, or is it a bracha on something else? A Torah to una bracha, bracha la shel Torah. Just like you say a bracha on an apple when you eat an apple, you say a bracha on Torah when you learn Torah. Right, so is that how you understand? That's how Chaim said you should understand uh, learning Gemara, or Berchus Torah, rather, right? 
you could say Birch Torah is like before you blow shofar or you hear shofar, you say a bracha on that action. You might say bracha on Torah is like that. Or what Rav Chaim is suggesting, the bracha on Torah is like the bracha before eating an apple. It's on the chetz of Torah. Just like you say a bracha on the apple, you say a bracha on the Torah. Okay, so then what's the debate about? That ties directly in to our larger question, right? What counts as Torah? That's that's literally the title of our shir. What counts as Torah for the purposes of saying Berachas the Torah, which probably tells you something about Torah in its essence, about what really is sort of the core Torah. So that's the question. Chefza the Torah shebichsav, or af chefza the Torah and it's sort of I think is a, a decent way of reading Rashi that we said before. Does only something that's the written Torah count, or even the oral Torah can count as Torah for the purposes of being a chefta, an object of Torah that needs a bracha set on it? The av Torah shaval peh in a el shaka and then within the track of even Torah shaval peh, is it all of Torah shaval peh, or is it only Torah shaval peh that's you know directed and and clear, or is it even the shaka of the back and forth going through the whole argument? Does that count as Torah per se? Because there's a lot of uh, flip flopping and you know. Uh, partial formulations and not clear conclusions. Does that count too? That's part of the debate. Now the Rav here says very clearly, you know, I think it's not obvious, but at least in his view, in terms of the mitzvah of learning Torah, there's no difference. You're still learning Torah. We'll see, I think next week, some people might dispute that. They might say that qualitatively, they're not the same. But the, the Rav here is saying, nah, in terms of the mitzvah, they're the same. The only question is, does the bracha, do you say a bracha on this sort of object of Torah or that sort of object of Torah? Fine. So that was a, another explanation. And now finally, he gets into the writ. Fine, he goes to the other girsa, um, and he has the story with Rav, so he says, "V'tzarch beer legirsas harif," right? So we had said before the riff, in a lot of ways, is is clearer than our Gemara. But he says, "Here's a problem for the riff. You need to explain mahi svaras rov alazar." The mevarchem al talmud v'lo al medrash, right? The third view, Tanakh, yes. Then the second, that's the first view. The second view is Tanakh and Mishnah. The third view is Tanakh, Mishnah, and Gemara. The fourth view is also medrash. So what's rov alazar thinking in view number three that you say berasatara on talmud but not on medrash? What's the logic? V'nirah. The sober the mevarkim rock al torah shaval peh the isbe chalos shem hora similar to what we said before, right? Only torah tanach itself is a whole other story. But tanach itself, obviously, that's torah that's in. But in terms of torah shaval peh, maybe you only will say brachas torah and torah shaval peh that's directed towards a ruling, right? Torah shvichsav, that's the text. You're supposed to study that. You're supposed to know that. Period. Torah shaval peh is not really a text, right? It's oral. It's not really a text. Torah shaval peh is about keeping. The Torah, keeping halacha, doing the right things. So that's about hora. That's about direction, instruction. So if the if your Torah Shabbat pet isn't telling you what to do, it's not doesn't qualify as Torah Shabbat pet for these purposes. So Mishnah, come on, Mishnah, Hamahava Ramamish, Mishnah obviously is classical Torah Shabbat pet because it very clearly tells you what to do much of the time. The Talmud, okay, Talmud, okay, it's a bit less direct, but it at least explains the principles. That also ultimately is telling you what to do. Ula medrish, dainu drushes up sukim yugim omidos. What's medrish? Medrish is sort of, you know, reading sukim and interpreting it. Oh, we can make a kalva chomer like this. We can make a gzer shava like that. It's not really, you're not really learning chumish proper, right? You're, it's some, it's a step removed from that. And you're not doing torch pay either because you're not telling me what to do. There's no practical conclusion there. Again, once in a while there is. That's not the way it usually works. So, uh, right, uh, you're giving us ena koveya hara the halacha doesn't con- doesn't decide the halacha unless sharak megala mukra halacha. It's giving you the sources. It's not telling you what to do. Lachain aim medrash bechal hara ve aim mevark mala. That's that view, right? And um, so I think here in the rav you saw a few different directions that you can go in. Now we're basically out of time. Um, we have two more pages, but the truth is these next two pages are going to integrate well in what we're going to do next week anyway. So I'll just say big picture. Chaya raised this question. What about agada? They're going even a step further. What about other things? So we're going to sort of expand our possibilities beyond these four categories. But let's just quickly look at the tour and the Shulchan Aruch in terms of basic psaq. And the next time we'll look at the commentaries of Shulchan Aruch who raise a whole host of other things. Tour says, Here's what you need to say, Bracha on the Mikra, the Medrish, the Mishnah, Ula Talmud. Very clear. The tour says the big four in the order of our Gemara, Mikra, Medrish, Mishnah, Talmud. That's the tour. 
And the Shulchan Aruch, though, Tzarek Levarich, Bein the Mikra, Bein the Mishnah, Bein the Gemara. What did the Shulchan Aruch leave out? Medrash. And then Haggah, the comment by presumably the Ramah, he says, Bein the Medrash, also Medrash. So it's a little odd. All the commentators say, oh no, of course the Shulchan Aruch meant Medrash too. Um, and we're talking here about Medrash Halacha, as was the Rav. All the commentators say, well, the Shulchan definitely meant Medrash too, but I'm not so sure. It's not obvious to me because he goes out of his way. The, the Shulchan Aruch read the tour and then wrote his own thing. Very often, he just says the same exact thing as the tour. He could have done that very easily. Instead, he leaves out the words, Bain Medrash. So it makes you wonder. People say, well, Medrash is a subset of Gemara. Medrash is a subset of Mikra. It's a little, it's again, in practice, no one says this. But if you want to theoretically know what the Shulchan Aruch held, I don't know. If I were a betting man, I, I, uh, there's definitely a decent bet to be made on, uh, on the Shulchan Aruch saying that, that we paskin. Again, it's not crazy. You could just paskin like the third sheet and the Gemara. And, and uh, um, right, according to the Rifts Girsa, right? Uh, that, that you don't have, that you don't have uh, Medrash. And we just paskin like that. Uh, it's not so crazy. And uh, the Rav gave a nice logic for that, right? We saw the Rav logic. Torah Shabbat is Tanakh itself. Torah Shabbat Pen needs to have an instruction component. It needs to tell you what to do. If it doesn't tell you what to do, if it's just Medrash, then it doesn't count. Anyway, next week we'll pick up with more of that and we'll expand to a whole host of other questions. For tonight, though, I hope we saw um, both reading the Gemara and a bunch of different commentaries on how to break it up, um, a, lot of, a lot of different uh, angles as to how to think about this, right? Is it, is it all about just uh, Tanakh and expansions of Tanakh? Is there a separate corpus of Torah Shaval Peh? And if there is, what's, what's that about? Is that about, is it really just the corpus itself qualifies? Um, does it need to be specific teachings? Does a commentary on it uh, qualify? Does it matter if there's consensus or if there's not, if there's a lot of machokas or not? These are all questions. In practice, um, I think all of the above qualify. Tanakh, Medrash, Mishnah, and Gemara. In theory, maybe not. Definitely a lot of views in theory that, that disagree with that. But it helps us think about when we talk about Torah, what qualifies, what doesn't. Um, and again, it doesn't mean it's, you know, even according to the views that you don't say Birks of Torah, it doesn't mean it's worthless. You may even fulfill the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. Probably you do fulfill the mitzvah of Talmud Torah when you study it. But it's not exactly the same. It's not as central. Um, unless you say this whole discussion is just about a technical question about brachos and whether there needs to be an action or not, like the Rav said in one of his approaches, in which case this question is not really relevant, right? The, our issue isn't really about what's Torah. It's more about what's, you know, what's suitable for a bracha, which would then be a whole other discussion. But uh, yeah, it's a lot, a lot in this. So yeah, happy to take questions and we'll pick up next time from here and, and expand outwards. Okay, I think, um, yeah, maybe uh, it needs some time to settle. And then uh, who knows? You have questions yeah. next week too. Right? <laughs> of course, of course. Yes. Um, thank you so much uh, for, yeah, a really great cheer. And um, let me think of, uh, yeah, um, things that are coming up soon. Uh, tomorrow is the last day to apply for the summer kolal in uh, Riverdale, so, and also the for the online um, Kolobar, of course, uh, Rabbi Zakir will be teaching as well. Yeah, so- we'll giving a Gemara um, Shir for two weeks, mm -hmm. the uh, two weeks before Shavuos. So May 23rd to June 3rd for, for all who are interested in applying for, for that, yeah. Yeah, coming up soon, so uh, yeah, looking forward and uh, see you next week, hopefully. <laughs>